much, Madam Deputy Speaker. I suspect everybody in this House became, became an MP because they wanted to make a difference. I most certainly did, and I know the Secretary of State did too. So I find the wording of this motion to be nothing other than an unacceptable personal attack on her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perhaps President Trump's visit to the UK this week can serve as a reminder. They go low and we go high. I have yet to talk to any organisation with deep knowledge of our benefit system, past and present, that doesn't agree that universal credit is a vast improvement on legacy systems. Anyone who cares about alleviating poverty and improving the life chances of the vulnerable wants universal credit to succeed. I could look backwards and say I wish we'd had more ministerial stability at the department, or that the rollout in the last 12 months could have been slower, or the £1.5 billion in the budget last year could have come a bit sooner. But since she has taken the reins at the DWP, the Secretary of State, just as her predecessor did, has listened, deciding not to pursue the court challenges over PIP. Severe disability payments we've heard about today. Both of those were the right thing to do. So I am confident that when those of us who have actually constructively assessed and told her what more we can do, she will listen. Let's start with the current system. We need universal support to upgrade to Martini status. Given that just 54% of claimants were able to enrol for UC without assistance, we need to ensure universal support is available anywhere, everywhere and any time. This means a full service specification with quality standards that can be monitored. It needs to include more than originally envisaged, including debt advice. It should be available through a trusted provider and to every claimant who needs it. I'd suggest contracting out to citizens of advice, housing associations, someone of that nature. The universal credit system as a whole needs some quality indicators. What does good look like? What are we aiming for in terms of payment timeliness? Ease of accessibility, advanced payment, debt monitoring. Let's think of claimants as valuable clients as citizens and taxpayers who deserve excellence in their interaction with the DWP. I want us to really focus on the most vulnerable claimants, those we know who are at risk of ending up in our surgeries and food banks. Victims of domestic abuse, modern slavery, mental health issues, the disabled. Let's treat them as a special set of customers, platinum customers, and make it our mission to ensure they don't fall through the net. Let's think about fast-tracking them through the system, advanced payments that we treat as a first payment, not loans to be collected back in. Because we pay UC in arrears, then let that advanced payment be collected right at the end. When all being well, the customer, with all the positive support of universal credit and the skills and passion of their work coach, have moved into good, sustainable employment. Well, well, thank you. Wait. Thank you. I, thought she, I mentioned work coaches, and one thing I was disappointed in the opposition's opening statement was that there was no gratitude or no thanks paid to the incredible men and women all over the country working on the front line in our job centres yeah, with absolutely. some of the most vulnerable people in our society. We should yeah, agree yeah. that they deserve our support. Ab thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. And they care deeply. And I've spent time with work coaches all over the country in different job centres, and they are so proud of what they do, and they absolutely deserve our support. And with them, we need to identify every crack in the system and ensure that our most precious, our platinum customers, don't slip through. And please, the Chancellor's agreed to keep an eye on the taper rate. And actually, none of the asks I've outlined so far have big financial costs to them, but there is one that we should ask him for. We've got to release working age claimants from the benefit freeze. Because universal credit can be the most positive and efficient system in the world, but if people can't afford to live on it when they're on it, it doesn't matter a jot. And we need to ask him for that. And all of this, I believe, has to be sorted out before we push that button for uh, managed migration. And this is important, because when we do that, about two-thirds of the claimants that will move across are ESA claimants. They're our platinum customers. Everything has to be perfect for them before we can move them across the system. And I'll need to be reassured of that before I can vote for that legislation in the autumn. So, Madam De Deputy Speaker, we on this side of the House want universal credit to work. Brilliant. We're going to work with Citizens Advice, with Trestle Trust, with Save the Children, and they are so desperate to positively engage and collaboratively do this together. Because getting universal credit right and in doing so helping millions of people in this country now that, Madam Deputy Speaker, that is a motion worth supporting. Jessica Morden. Thank you.